We live in the south of Sulawesi, one of the main islands of the Indonesian archipelago. This land soon became an important port of call for all spice traders in the region. That is why we Bugis are good merchants and excellent sailors. Further away from here, we even have a reputation for being pirates. <laughs> However, before becoming a seafaring people, we Bugis were peasants. In fact, not all of us live on the coast. Some live in the interior of the island, like me. My name is Abdul Halim. Nine months a year, I cultivate rice. But it's the rainy season now. The land is flooded. So my family and I leave the city of Singkang to live in our floating house in the middle of Lake Tempe. The first thing we must do when we arrive is to find our daughter, Ali Du Jung. In our absence, she stays here, somewhere near our rainy season house. She could never survive in Singkang, where she would be deprived of her freedom. And so we're a little worried. We don't know if she will still be around this year. Here, when a Varanus comes near a house, we know it's not a Varanus. These visits don't happen very often because animals and humans have their own territories. For us, it's a mystery that only a dream can explain. And so we dream, and we learn that the visitor is a parent or a child who passed away, or simply a new man among men. These beings are in danger, since they don't look any different from the other Varanases that live along the lake. Even if their identity is known to us, some Bugis kill them because their crocodile-like flesh is considered valuable. This 
Ali Du Yung came to us four years ago. A few days later, I dreamed that she was my son Swardi's twin sister, and so we adopted her. Today, she is part of our family. Every year we welcome Ali's spirit to our home and offer her protection. This bamboo altar is hers. It always contains food so that she is never in need. We love Ali Duyong and we don't want to lose her. The story of the King of Goa is a reminder to us that here in Sulawesi, Varanises are men. A long time ago, in the land of the Bugis, a queen gave birth to twins. One of them was in the form of a Varanus. The family hid its offspring out of shame, but in vain. A few days later, the infant died, but the Varanus survived. Since he refused to eat, everyone expected him to die as well. The worried king wondered what such an infant could possibly eat, until one night, the king dreamed that he had to take the baby Varanus to the river and let him go. The next day, the king put him down at the edge of the water and watched sadly as the current carried the Varanus away, but not before telling the infant that he would wait eternally for him to return. Ever since, we know that we must respect all Varanuses so as not to incur the anger of the king of Goa's son, who will return one day. Bagus mukanya, cantik. From November to February, it rains every day. That's why the lake gets so big. Usually, it's no deeper than the height of a man. But during the rainy season, we sleep on four meters of water, surrounded by water lilies and hyacinths, which grow in abundance and cover the lake. Thousands of years ago, the south of Sulawesi was separated from the rest of the island. Instead of the lake, there was an ocean. Right now, looking at the submerged land, we can fish once again, and we feel as if nothing has changed.
City people call us the peasants of the lake because we live to the rhythm of the rice harvests, the rain and the flooding. Although sometimes on the other side of the mountains, flooding is a curse, for us, it's a miracle. I want Swadi to learn how to cast the net and spread it out, as I learned from my father. At this time of the year, everybody fishes here. We can't afford to stay here without working. The fish in the lake aren't very big, but there are lots of them. In three months, I can get a good price for them in the Singkang market. <laughs> To preserve them, we gut the fish and dry them. At the end of the season, when we leave, the boat will be full of them. The rainy season is a second life. We change houses, jobs, and neighbors too. Some, however, no longer have the strength to grow rice, and so they abandon their floating houses and live in a shelter built on stilts. They stay there, between sky and water, in a space without land, not knowing sometimes in which direction the palm trees grow. After fishing, we devote a lot of time to our little daughter. Ali Du Jung is like the child we should have had, but didn't. Allah sent her to us in a different form, that's all. It's an honor to have been judged worthy of receiving her. Now, we must raise and cherish her and accept her as she is. We don't often speak about Ali to other people. Many people don't understand. Some even disapprove. They say that a true Muslim cannot believe in such a thing. Sometimes we feel a little isolated. We're simple people, but something exceptional has happened to us. Yeah, 
sudah mandi. Ya. Every night since our arrival here, I give thanks to Allah, who has reunited my children, and to Ali Duyung, who watches over Swardi as he sleeps. This morning, Ali Duyung disappeared. Nobody knows why or where she went. Of course, she's free to wander far away from us, but it's never happened before, and Swardi refuses to accept it. I know that no human could possibly find her. Nevertheless, our daughter is in danger, since freedom for a Varanus can also mean death. Far away from here, there is someone who has the power to convince her to come back. I must go and see him, and I will leave right away. On the other side of the lake in the former kingdom of Goa lives a descendant of the monarchy. His name is Ali Muhammad. I've never seen him, but they say his powers are very great. Thanks to him, we may see our Varanus child again. It's very important for our family and especially for Swardi. I must go to the village of Tudotoa. It's a hundred kilometers from here, near Ujang Pandang, the capital. But before reaching the plains, I have to get through the mountains.
It's very rare being able to get close to Maora macaques. They're very suspicious and disappear at the slightest sound. During the rainy season, however, there's almost nothing to eat in the forest and their hunger makes them more courageous. It's incredible. The whole troop is here. There must be 30 of them. These monkeys are unique in the world. They can only be found here in southern Sulawesi. A long time ago, only one species of monkey existed on the island. Then the sea invaded the Lake Tempe region, cutting the peninsula in two. During that period, groups of monkeys found themselves isolated, and they developed on their own. Now the Maora macaques form a separate species. The former kingdom of Goa is a Bugis territory. Here, the Sawa method of cultivation is used, consisting of irrigation of the rice paddies. It's the only place in Sulawesi where this is possible because the earth is rich and water reserves abundant. Goa is one of the rare regions in Indonesia to produce more rice than it consumes. People are rich here. Hajja Jobaida is a shaman. She is highly respected. But it's Ali Mohammed, her fifth child, we have come to see. He too has the form of a Varanus. When Ali Muhammad was born 36 years ago, Haja Jobaida fainted, and when she came to, Ali Muhammad had disappeared. He didn't come back until 13 years later, 
The villagers, thinking he was just another reptile, tried to kill him and seriously wounded him. To everyone's surprise, Ali Muhammad did not run away. It was by this sign that Haja Jobaida was able to recognize him. Today, people come to pay homage to him. I didn't realize how imposing Ali Muhammad really was. Of course, one can ask if Ali is really a man. But perhaps Allah was testing us by giving him the form of a Varanus. I know if the same thing had not happened to me, I would never have believed it. Here, people feel that Ali fulfills half of their wishes. They have been blessed with money or water for their rice paddies, creating abundant harvests. I too want him to accept my presence and ask my daughter Ali Duyung to come home. I know he has the power to do it. <laughs> Boogies are good Muslims, and yet everyone believes in the powers of Ali Muhammad. It is said that Allah sent him to look after little everyday things that he himself did not have time for. Ali Muhammad is Allah's representative in the kingdom of Goa. What's more, he is a haji, meaning he has made a pilgrimage to Mecca. That's another reason why we respect him. They say that when he returned to the village, Ali Muhammad refused to eat for a week. Then he threw up three pearls, a white one, a blue one, and a pink one. These pearls were considered as symbols of the three principles of Islam. 
willingness to pray, the gestures of prayer, and obtaining through prayer what one asks for. From that day onward, Ali Muhammad was promoted to the rank of a divinity, and some villagers think of him as the lost son of the king of Goa. Haji Hamad is Haja Jobaida's brother. He and his wife watch over Ali Muhammad, whom they raise like a son. The bath is a daily ritual which brings the man Varanas closer to his adoptive parents. They are now united until death separates them. Today, the entire village is getting ready to celebrate the anniversary of the day Ali Muhammad returned to live among men 23 years ago. The rice paddies are deserted because each person is making an offering and preparing the food needed for the ceremony. On this occasion, Todetoa becomes the capital of the ancient kingdom of Goa and the heyday of great pagan traditions which existed before the arrival of Islam are relived once again. the cage of offerings we build Wala Suji. It must contain gifts meant for the spirits of the water. It will be thrown into the river because the river guided Ali Muhammad to the village. Hundreds of believers, all fervent Muslims, come together to pay tribute to Ali Muhammad. It might seem contradictory to pray to Allah and to revere an animal who lives in the minds of men. Muslims who strictly observe the principles of Islam, the sanctuary, say that this religious practice is obviously rooted in superstition. But we mustn't forget that most Indonesians don't speak Arabic. We don't have access to the sacred texts. 
We therefore sometimes only have a vague notion of what our religion tolerates or imposes on us. It's the first time I've attended this kind of ceremony. I think my story has moved them, but all this attention upsets me a little. I don't feel at home here, and I keep thinking about my family and about how sad Swardi is. I believe in Allah, who is great, and in Ali Muhammad, who can, if he hears me, reunite my children. Daggers and the Quran are venerated by the faithful since his pilgrimage to Mecca sanctified them. Like every Haji, his sacred objects never leave his side. They bear witness to these moments which changed his life. As Muslims, our goal in life is to go to Mecca. It doesn't prevent many Bugis from traveling dozens of kilometers to see and touch Ali Muhammad. It's a different kind of pilgrimage. Water is the realm of spiritual beings. That is why the ceremony takes place on the river bank. We often leave our offerings on the banks of rivers because that is where the spirits live. 
It's a point of access to the sky or to the world of the abyss. On the other bank, the chanting of the Bisous lures Ali Muhammad to the world of the spirits. The Bisous are transvestite priests who consider themselves to be impotent and who call themselves Saladewi or false woman in Bugis. The appearance of these effeminate beings, however, has a sacred significance. It is a way of communicating with the divinities. They are here today to prove that union with the spiritual world is possible and because they have the power to be understood by Ali Muhammad. Before he leaves, to make certain that he will return, they are going to show him the way back. We let the children take the offerings, but in spite of their games, this festival is also very dramatic. Every year, we relive the departure of Ali Muhammad as a sort of mourning, and each of us feels deep inside that he will never return. Just by his presence, Ali Muhammad blesses us and the entire region. When he swims, he purifies the water, and those who bathe in it will be protected against all calamities for a year. For us, preparing for another world where we can attain happiness and eternal life means praying to Allah. We place our soul and our salvation in Islam, but we confide our mortal lives to Varanus men out of respect for the beliefs of our ancestors. We are sure that Ali Muhammad is in contact with Allah and that he can intervene for us. I hope he has heard my prayer and that Ali Duyung will come home.